Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farms and this is my friend Chili. Me and Chili are here to talk to you today about some things that we absolutely have to protect our lambs and goat kids against. Stay tuned to find out more. I brought Chili out here. Chili's actually a bottle baby that we got from one of our uh, friends. Uh, he's a couple weeks old. He's a little boar goat. Um, and boy, bottle babies are tough and they're tough to raise uh, for multiple reasons. But Chili today, he got me thinking about um, some very specific things that we got to take the time to protect our lambs and our goat kids against. You know, there's so many vaccines out there and so many medications, it can get confusing as to which ones to use, which ones you really need and which ones you don't. And I understand that some of you are very anti-vax and you just absolutely do not want to treat uh, your animals with any kind of vaccines. But I gotta tell you, there's one vaccine that if you're not giving it, you need to be giving it, and that is CD&T. And what the CD&T actually has most to do with is this nasty little bug that lives in the intestines of these uh, lambs and goat kids, and it's Clostridium perfringens. And that Clostridium, uh, it normally is just a happy little guy. It's kinda lives in the intestines. It doesn't cause too much trouble. But every once in a while, if the conditions get to be just right, it grows at an explosive rate. It just grows exponentially and it wreaks havoc on that animal. You know, back in the old days, the old timers used to refer to the Clostridium as uh, overeating disease. Now there's two different types of Clostridium strains that primarily affect lambs and goat kids. And that's Clostridium type C and type D. Um, so the C, D, and T in the CDT vaccine is for Clostridium type C, Clostridium type D, and then tetanus. Um, those are the three things that if they're going to kill one of your sheep or goats, that's probably what's going to get them. Um, so the old timers used to refer to the Clostridium uh, type C and D as overeating disease because what they found is that if their animals got loose and got into some feed and ate too much or found themselves in a place where they got their uh, little mouths on a bunch of corn um, and they overate, they actually died and they died rather quickly. So they just thought, well, uh, they ate too much. They ate themselves to death. And some of you have probably heard that misnomer before where you really got to watch sheep and goats because if you don't, uh, they will just eat themselves to death. Nope, 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 nope. He was getting a little too heavy for me and my arm was cramping up. He's going to be mad now. Anyways, so Clostridium, uh, we used to call it overeating disease and it was the thought that, well, they just ate too much and they died. That's not the case. What was happening was they were eating too much feed that was high in starch, uh, things like corn especially, and it caused an explosion of this gut bacteria, this Clostridium. And when that explosion happens, that Clostridium actually releases toxins into uh, the bloodstream and uh, gets absorbed and it ends up killing the animal and it ends up killing it pretty darn quick. The reason I don't like the term overeating disease is because it's not just from getting out and overeating and getting into grain. As we said, there's two different types, the C type and the D type. And when you see the C type of Clostridium generally tend to manifest itself, it's at two weeks of age or younger. And as you know, they're not really eating a lot of grain, if any, at that point. So what the heck is going on there? Well, this has more to do with any fluctuations in that gut flora. And in the case of the Clostridium type C, it's again, usually two weeks or younger. Um, and it has to do with the change in the milk that they're getting. Um, so typical situations where you see this happen, uh, you normally see it in large bodied single babies. So a large bodied uh, goat kid, a large bodied uh, lamb that is a single birth. The reason for this is they can get lots and lots of milk. They're very big, they're very strong, and they can drink lots. Um, they have free range on mom because they're the only ones. And what ends up happening is they end up taking in way too much milk. 
and then it causes these effects. The other thing that you can see this happen with is kind of with these bummer lambs and bummer kids. You know, they're born, they're a little bit sick, um, they're not doing well. And then all of a sudden they, you know, they get to about a week of life or a couple days in and they start to feel better and they really pop up and get going. And so they go from not eating very much of mom's milk to now eating a whole bunch. And what ends up happening is, is again, they get this overeating abnormality. They get this imbalance of this clostridium in their small intestines and it goes nuts. The last case that you see is with these darn bottle babies. Um, you know, it's very difficult uh, when you're transitioning a bottle baby from one over owner to another. That's where you really get into trouble. You know, the original owner has them on a very set schedule. They're eating a certain amount and then they go to this individual's home that wants to be very kind and they love their animal and they literally feed it to death. They overfeed it, milk, that milk gets into their system, too much of it again and it throws everything out of whack. So again, you know, with all the clostridium, we're talking about an overabundance of feed and it's allowing that clostridium to kind of get out of whack um, and proliferate, that is it grows exponentially, gets out of control and releases toxins. Now, in the clostridium type C, it releases what's called a beta toxin um, and that beta toxin acts very, very fast and usually kills them within a, period of hours. And so this is very common. If you've got babies, if you've ever had babies, they're under two weeks of age and they come out, they're doing fine. Everything's going great. They're super healthy. You go to bed one night, you get up, you go out the next morning and they're laying there dead. Chances are you're looking at uh, clostridium that got them. So with that being said, let's kind of shift gears. We've talked about clostridium type C. Now let's talk about clostridium type D. All right, so with the clostridium type D, this is the one that we see that affects uh, the lambs and the goat kids, usually after about two weeks of age. And this is the one that has a lot to do with the overeating of grains, specifically very starchy grains. Um, starchy grains, when I think of starchy grains, I think of corn specifically. Um, so you may have heard this misnomer that, oh, well, you should never feed lambs or goat kids corn. That's complete hogwash. Um, what these people are mistaken about is that uh, they think that overfeeding them corn or them eating corn in general is going to cause this to happen and that's not the case. Again, it has to do with these wild swings, these, these very quick swings going on in the amount that they eat. Now, uh, in the case of the clostridium type D, um, they actually have a, I cannot remember, Epsilon. Uh, it, is a, it is in the type C, we have the beta toxin. In the type D, we have the Epsilon toxin. That Epsilon toxin tends to affect more of the brain. Um, and even if they survive it, which they usually don't, it causes lesions on the brain and they can actually have long-term brain damage but again, it's very, very, very unlikely that they're going to survive it. Um, so that's the D. So type C, we're looking at too much milk, too quick, too much of a change. Type D, we're looking at a major change in grain um, that happens too quickly. In the end, the result's the same. They generally lead to death. So what do we do to prevent this? Big thing that you can do is control your feed as much as possible. Now here on Lanasa Farms, our goat kids and our lambs are on free choice uh, grain all the time, um, but this allows them to, uh, they generally tend not to overeat, and as they grow, they kind of grow into eating more and more, and they get used to it. But the number one thing that we do is we vaccinate against this. So we want to vaccinate our moms. Ideally, you want to vaccinate your moms three weeks before having their kids and lambs, but it's very hard to do because, you know, sometimes you think they're gonna lamb or kid and then they don't. So what we like to tell people is, and what uh, Michigan State University uh, agrees with us in this, uh, I, I shouldn't hold myself in that high of esteem. I should say I agree with Michigan State University in saying that two weeks before lambing or kidding, we wanna give our moms their booster shot, their annual booster shot of their CDT vaccination. And then the thought process behind that is, is it goes into the colostrum and the babies are protected. Uh, scientific evidence shows that yes, indeed, the babies are protected. Um, 
old school school of thought was that we needed to vaccinate our lambs and our goat kids against CDT um, kind of earlier on in life. Now scientific evidence shows that really if you're given CDT vaccine before six weeks of age, it's really not protecting them too much at all. Um, so first shot should be at about six weeks of age and then three weeks later, um, at least three weeks later, um, we want to be giving uh, we want to be giving more. I think in a perfect world, ideally, the universities say eight weeks of life uh, or 60 days in is when you want to give the first shot and then uh, just follow the manufacturer's directions as to when to give the second shot. So for our babies, two shots. Um, after that, again, our mamas are just going to get their annual shot, their annual booster that we're going to give at two weeks. This should help to protect those babies um, and keep them healthy. The other thing is, is you want to control the amount of food that they get. You want to give it to them on a consistent basis. Um, and you want to you want to protect them in that manner. Now here on Lanessa Farms, with our uh, creep, we always keep our creep full. We're never letting our creep run empty, so those babies are starving to death, and then we pour a bunch of high protein feed in there uh, that has basically a corn and soybean base to it, um, because those babies will overeat, and then they're going to have all kinds of problems. Uh, it's rare that we would have a CDNT problem. I've never actually seen, or excuse me, a Clostridium problem here. Um, more or less, if our animals overeat, we see them get scours. Um, so that's Clostridium in a nutshell. That's basically what I can tell you about it. Um, trying to think of what else I can tell you. Antidote, let's say that you have an animal that's not treated effectively and they get exposed. There is an antitoxin. Uh, it has to be given to them very, very quickly. Um, and usually by the time you're seeing clinical signs and symptoms, it's too late and the um, antitoxin is not going to work for you. Um, the other good news is, is as these animals age, as our, as our adults age, they tend to have an enzyme that's released by their pancreas. Um, um, protease that will help to actually protect them against this. Um, so that comes in handy as well. So this is basically, generally speaking, a uh, disease that affects the little ones uh, much, 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 much more than it affects our older ones. But with that being said, it can be absolutely devastating. So definitely something that you're going to want to keep an eye on. Uh, check out the comments below. Check out Lanessa Farms Tack Box. Uh, you know the drill. If you have something to say or if you have questions, if you have experience with this, let us know. Leave a comment below. Uh, you not only help yourself, but you help other people as well. With that being said, I just threw a ton of information at you as always i know but that's okay you can always watch the video again if you missed out on anything that i said so i am tim from lanessa farms a special dna heirloom livestock thanks for joining me again today and i look forward to seeing you again next time